What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Saturday Livestream. We're talking about stocks, personal finance, or pretty much anything that comes up in the chat box. So thank you again for joining me this Saturday. So let's get right into it, you guys. Let's take a look at the fan favorite FinViz recap for the week and see what we have here. As we pretty much know, if you've been following the markets at all for the past month, month and a half, everything has pretty much been in the red. However, take a look at this little hidden gem. Let me make sure that you can see this here. Out of this ocean of red, look at this little green guy right here, General Mills. That's actually one of the stocks I recommended to buy in December. Uh, it's up 3.83% compared to pretty much uh, negative everything um, across the board here, you guys. So again, just so you know, this is I'm being uh, overly dramatic. This is just taking a look at the S&P 500. Obviously, there have been a lot more stocks that were in the green. However, for the most part, I'd say pretty much everyone's portfolio has been down over the past few weeks. Um, so let's take a look at this, you guys. Uh, Apple is down almost 9%. Microsoft is down 7.3%. Uh, Google's down 5.75%. Amazon getting crushed at 13.5%. What is going on, you guys? We are definitely in a bear market. We are definitely in correction territory. Um, how long do you think this is going to last? I feel like the market, as I've been mentioning in my last few videos, is definitely going to be choppy starting quarter one and moving through 2019. Uh, we can see here that ExxonMobil down 10%. Johnson & Johnson, which is typically, it does pretty well in corrections, is down almost 4%. Uh, Merck & Company down almost 5%. What is going on, you guys? Um, pretty much a bloodbath everywhere. So let me open up a new tab here so I can take a look at the health of the live stream and also see uh, if anybody is chatting me in the live chat box. So how's everyone's week going? Um, mine's doing pretty well. We have Christmas coming up here in the next couple days. Uh, Cleveland just got dumped on with some snow. It actually looks very pretty. I'm actually glad that we're going to have a quote-unquote white Christmas. Um, we'll see what happens with you know any gifts that I uh, get or give. Not that it's about gifts. Who cares about gifts? It's about spending time with family and everyone being happy and healthy. Um, let's go into the live chat here, you guys, and see if anybody is joining us. Uh, the health of the stream looks to be okay. I know last week we had some choppiness. I hope everything is going okay right now. Um, Okay, the st stream is actually live and jumping here. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Um, so MedMen says, I got my pen and paper ready. Let's go. Uh, sales education channel. Hey, yo, what's happening, Marco? How has your holiday been other than the market? Holiday's been great, man. Um, you know, I've worked uh, half a day on Friday, uh, pretty much getting caught up. I work full time. As you guys know, I work at a big regional bank here in Cleveland. And, um, you know, we're starting to see a little bit of this market downturn as well. You know, a lot of our products... Um, you know, our margins are, you know, pretty razor thin at this point, especially with interest rates going up. Um, you know, some stuff is slowing down. Commercial lending is slowing down. Uh, Reggae World Music says, what's up? How you doing, my friend? Uh, Doug Whitaker, look at the red color. That's right. Trump's wall. I will be touching on that in this live stream as well. Um, let's see here. Reggae World, when will it collapse? I mean, we're, it's definitely starting on the downturn, man, as you can see there. Uh, let me pull it back on the FinViz. Yeah, it's definitely a wall of red, <laughs> so you guys can take a look at that. Um, Doug says, been living dangerously, playing the penny stocks. Uh-oh, that's something that I definitely don't delve in, Doug, but uh, good luck, my man. Uh, Jerry says, yo, Merry Christmas, Marco. How you doing, Jerry? Nice to see you, my friend. Uh, always a pleasure having you on, buddy. Um, so let's go to a new tab here. Let me see what else we got for you guys. So to... Um, to Doug's point, you can see here that the U.S. government partial shutdown as Congress resists, resists funding Trump's border wall. Uh, so ultimately, what's going on here, you guys, is I feel like this is becoming a normal occurrence. Um, you know, government shutdowns used to be more rare than we're seeing now. I feel like, you know, whether this is kind of like the World Wrestling Federation, where it's just a show between Republicans and Democrats, um, and we're kind of just the people here on the sidelines, you know, eating popcorn and being fed, you know, this show or this uh, play, if you will, um, you know, politics, you know, in Hollywood and all that and, and big media, it's all entrenched together, you guys. I don't know, you know, what you can or can't believe. A lot of it seems to be, you know, orchestrated and, you know, it's very uh, theatrical for the most part. 
so and uh, let me give it my best uh, Trump impression here. So he said, President Donald Trump warned of a very long shutdown. So uh, the shutdown, it's going to be very long if we can't build the wall. It's going to be a big shutdown, one of the biggest shutdowns in government history. We got to work together on this. But <laughs> was that all right? <laughs> rate, rate that in the chat box. Is that like a 7 out of 10, 6 out of 10? I thought that was pretty good. Uh, so moving forward, I just wanted to show you guys some of these photos, uh, kind of summing up, you know, business and finance throughout 2018. I thought a lot of these were pretty cool. Um, so this just happened recently. This was the G20 summit in Buenos Aires, Argentina, uh, on December 1st. So this was about three weeks ago, you guys. You can see uh, Trump right here just handling his business. You can see the Chinese president right over there. Um, pretty interesting how they're all wearing blue ties. They're all wearing red. It seems again, guys. It just seems like a big uh, uh, Broadway musical. You know, <laughs> everyone's in costume. Um, so let's see what we got here in the chat. Uh, Doug says, "Think when his walk wall is built, we should pu push Humpty Dumpty off the wall." <laughs> uh, Jerry Nix nailed it. <laughs> Robert says, "Huge. How you doing, Bob? Nice to see you, my man." It's going to be the biggest shutdown ever. <laughs> I don't know if you can see my hands in the screenshot. Hold on. It's going to be the biggest shutdown ever. I feel like my hands are a little bit bigger than Trump's though, you know? It's going to be the biggest. <laughs> so moving on, what is the next picture here? Let me get to the browser. Um, so the next one you can see here, this is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, she's... Uh, a communist, I mean socialist, I mean uh, the newest uh, woman ever elected to Congress from New York, and she's got those big bug eyes. She's got those big Adderall bug eyes that kind of like, if you went on a first date with her, you kind of be intimidated, like, so what's your favorite movie? What do you like to do? You know, going 100 miles an hour. Um, so I don't know if she's on Adderall or what, but she talks a mile a minute. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I support her don't support her i'm kind of just poking fun at her but you can see here that it is good to see you know a woman being elected to congress obviously at her age that's a huge accomplishment um a lot of that comes from you know the people that voted for her um in that district so congrats to her uh this is king zuck so uh if you guys remember zuckerberg he testified before congress uh, earlier this year one of my favorite uh, moments from that uh, testimony was when <laughs> This congressman asked him, this guy is like 843 years old, right? And he asked uh, Zuckerberg, he goes, so Zuck, um, you know, if you guys, you know, don't sell anything or, you know, I'm paraphrasing here. If you don't sell anything or if you don't have any products, how are you profitable? How do you make money? <laughs> and Zuckerberg just goes, well, uh, congressman, we sell ads. <laughs> it was so funny to see how out of touch some of those people were. Um, okay, Doug's laughing. At least someone finds my impressions funny. Come on, guys. Where's everyone at, man? I feel like uh, the chat is dwindling here. What's going on? Uh, hey, I'm making myself laugh, so that's all that matters. Um, but yeah, ultimately, you can see that Facebook's taken a crap over the past, you know, couple of quarters here now. I still think they have an ace up their sleeve with uh, virtual reality, with Oculus Rift, with WhatsApp. They still have a lot of stuff that's um, in R&D that they're not necessarily monetizing. And obviously Instagram is the most you know, popular social media platform at this time. So right here we got Trump's kind of Euro mullet going on and you can see uh, Kim Jong-un in the background. I can only imagine, you know, what Kim is like, what they just got done doing, you know, it's like who knows where they're coming from. Uh, this was in Singapore, but I could only imagine Trump going to North Korea and these two hanging out. This would probably be a hilarious movie or at least, you know, some sort of a show or a skit. Um, but ultimately, you know, <laughs> Trump's calling him Rocket Man and all this stuff. I mean, this is we're living in the Matrix right now. That's all I can say. Uh, this was pretty cool. This is off one of my favorite podcasts. This is the uh, Joe Rogan Experience. For those of you that don't listen to Joe Rogan, um, I've been a longtime listener of his. Um, and he's just a super curious guy. He has a lot of people on his podcast. He's essentially the modern day podcast version of Howard Stern. Um, he just knows how to ask the right questions. He's a super good interviewer. And you can see here that this is Elon Musk literally smoking a blunt of marijuana on the podcast. Um, to be honest, this was one of his more boring podcasts just because Elon is just kind of like a queer, quirky, weird dude in general. Um, but I thought this was pretty cool to touch on. Uh, you can see here I touched I made a video about this earlier this year about Sears closing. 
Um, they're closing a ton of stores. I, I believe this is talking about 142 closures um, in addition to the 40 that they already announced for 2019. I know that there is a Sears right by my house uh, that actually just closed. Um, so, I mean, it's for real, you guys. It's, sometimes you see this stuff on the news and it affects people on the coasts and all that. But, you know, when you see it happening down the street from you, that's when you know what time it is. Um, so, yeah, sorry to hear about all the people, you know, that work for Sears getting laid off. But, you know, what can you do? The writing has been on the wall uh, for a long time now, you guys. So what we have here is the cannabis industry representatives. The market is open. So on October 17th, as we all know, I've touched on marijuana stocks on this channel a few times. Uh, Canada became the second country after uh, Uruguay uh, to legalize recreational marijuana for adults. So I worked with a guy from Uruguay, and uh, I don't know if he's been back. We didn't really talk about it much, but um, I know Portugal, I mean, they've legalized you know, pretty much all drugs. I, see, I think that's helped some people there. Uh, Uruguay's legalized all drugs. United States is going to be here within the next, you know, five, ten years for sure. Um, ultimately, I don't know how I feel about that. You know, I don't use marijuana. Um, I have tried CBD in the past. Uh, just when I went skiing, it just felt like you're taking a couple Advil. Um, there's no, you know, um, mental effects. There's no THC. There's no psychoactive effects. So we'll see what happens here, you guys. I mean, I'm not a parent yet. I mean, I don't know if I want this stuff being legal with, you know, raising kids and all that, but. Who knows? We'll see. But at the end of the day, uh, Toronto Stock Exchange uh, made a lot of stuff uh, legal here. Or excuse me, not Toronto Stock Exchange. The Canadian government made uh, marijuana legal here, and Toronto Stock Exchange was one of the beneficiaries of that. Uh, so this is Colin Kaepernick. Not know, I don't know how this applies to business or finance. This is more political and um, racial, and I kind of don't even want to go there on this channel. I know how I feel about stuff like this. Um, I think he's brave for doing what he did, but at the end of the day, um, you know, with social media, kind of like with this fake like applause, like, oh, oh, you're so brave. Oh, it's like, dude, come on, man. Um, so we got 302 saying go Canada. The farm signing brought it all down. <laughs> he's laughing at Trump's hair. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, General Motors announced in November it was cutting 14,700 jobs. So again, this kind of goes back to my Sears comment. You know, it's you don't really notice it until it's down the street from you. Uh, there's a Lordstown, there's a plant in Lordstown, Ohio. It's about an hour away from me, um, from Cleveland, and they actually create, they build this uh, Chevy Cruze. And I know they're talking about shutting that plant down, which has a ton of jobs in that area. Um, so I think that all these people excuse me, these companies that are making these big job cuts, uh, I think it's because, you know, 2019 is going to be crappy and car sales are down. So this doesn't just apply to car sales. I think in general, 2019, the forecast in terms of, you know, spending and stuff like that is just going to be lower across the board. Um, so 86 people died in a wildfire that covered 117,000 acres in Northern California in November. Um, so a lot of this was due to obviously, you know, nature and drought and things like that. Um, but there's obviously, you know, California forests were mismanaged. There's a PG&E group uh, was said one of his power lines was damaged. And, you know, that's what caused a lot of these fires. You know, that stock got crushed. So just from like a moral and ethical perspective, you know, a lot of people were hating on that company. And, you know, rightfully so. If they cause people death and harm and all that, um, you know, what can you do? You know, it's like, I don't, I don't mean to sound crass. It's like you need to have you need to have more moral obligation rather than just looking at the bottom line in terms of returning value to shareholders. I know that's obviously important, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, one thing is money. The other thing is human life. So uh, the next one we have here is Jeff Bezos. In July, he officially became the richest person person in modern history. I like how they say modern because uh, when you think about like Genghis Khan and all these like, you know, Alexander the Great and Julius Caesar, it's like who knows how much wealth and power those people realistically had. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Amazon stock has been crushing it over the past year. And obviously he owns, you know, a crap ton of those shares. So obviously that's going to go directly down to his uh, bottom line or net worth. So as you can see here, um, you know. He's, he's doing well, and obviously, you know, he earned it. He's, he's created a, a platform, and he's taking advantage of the technology times that we live in today, and he's made a really easy buying experience for 
you know, millions of people. So obviously he's going to benefit from that. So Trump nominated Brett Kavanaugh. Again, this has nothing to do with business and finance. I mean, it does. It obviously trickles down, but you know, I'm not even going to go here. I don't really, you know, care to be honest. <laughs> Um, what do we? What else do we have here? It was the handshake seen around the world. Russian President Vladimir Putin and Saudi Arabian Crown Prince Mohammed greeted one another enthusiastically in Buenos Aires. Um, this is more uh, anti-Russia propaganda that we seem to be seeing in the news. Um, I think the media always needs a boogeyman, and Russia is always that scapegoat. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, if you guys actually go on YouTube and listen and watch Putin's uh, speeches. Uh, you'll see that there's no teleprompters, no script, no nothing. He, everything he says is from his own brain, uh, whether it's true or not. Uh, he takes any questions from most reporters in the crowd, um, which is you know pretty much non-existent in American politics. So take all this with a grain of salt, you guys. You have to use your own brain and do your own research. Um, so this this obviously has to do with oil, um, as you can see here that. You know, Putin said, like, I'm not going to stop the production of oil. Saudi Arabia said, I'm not going to slow down my production of oil either. Um, you know, USA is actually exporting oil now, which they haven't done. You know, I don't, I don't know if it's ever, but they haven't done it in uh, many, many years. So we see where the state of oil is around the world with that being said. Um, these are two penguins. This has nothing to do with stocks or finance. Um, so you can see here, this is the Mexican children, you know, being a ta taken away from their uh, parents, the U.S. border, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, if you're coming into the country illegally, obviously you shouldn't, you know, be separated from your child, but you know that's a risk you take. Uh, my parents are immigrants from Eastern Europe. My wife's parents are immigrants from Eastern Europe. They came, they came here not only legally, they also sponsored other Eastern Europeans um, while they while they were getting you know their citizenship, um, so part of me being first generation American is kind of torn on this. It's like, hey, you know, why should you jump a fence and reap the benefits of living in the states when you're sending all your money back to Mexico anyway? When my parents came here from Eastern Europe legally without a dime in their pockets, so you know, separating children from their families is obviously wrong. But obviously, there's the you know skew on all this going on where it's more oh how can you do this you're the worst blah 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 well keep in mind they're coming into the country illegally so um you know rules and standards and laws have to be upheld at some point um so george hw bush the 41st president of the united states died on november 3rd if you remember i believe there was no trading on december 5th or that following wednesday whatever it was so markets were shut down for that uh, George Bush, his dad pretty much started the CIA. Um, the Bushes have been connected, <laughs> you know, all throughout history, or at least uh, um, George W's, not Herbert Walker, but George W. Um, his grandpa, you know, literally started the CIA. He's one of the people that was well connected in there, and the Bush family has been reaping the benefits of that for many years. Obviously, they're tied in with big oil. They're tied in with bin Laden. Um, that's a fact. You can go look it up. Um, but a lot of this is never talked about. <laughs> so how do I feel about his death? I don't know. I was like, you know, six years old when he was uh, the president. So what do we have here next? I think that was the last picture of the slide. So let me check the chat. Let's see if anybody is even uh, listening or commenting on here. Uh, Widley Abdul says, good morning. Uh, Widley says, what's up, Marco? Flo Flora Wu says, agree with you about the immigrants. Yeah, it's true. I mean, what can you do? I'm just speaking from my heart and I'm speaking from facts. You know, if you want to come here illegally, well, you re, uh, have the risk of, you know, being deported or being, you know, um, detained in an ICE facility. You know, what, what can you do? You didn't come here legally. Um, that's a huge problem in uh, Europe right now, you know, with migration and things like that. Um, you know, there's illegal immigrants all over the place and Europe is becoming, uh, let's just say, less European. And I'll leave it at that. Um, okay, we got about 25 people on the stream. Glad everybody could make it. Thank you so much. Let's see what else we got here in store for you guys. Um, I wanted to go through those photos because it's a nice, you know, uh, visual summary rather than, you know, uh, uh, quantitative with just numbers. Um, as we all know, stocks are getting crushed. You guys, we saw in the Finviz that everything was pretty much red across the board. Uh, you can see here, I believe just on Friday, the S&P was down 2.1%. NASDAQ is down 3%. Uh, Fang stocks getting crushed. Let me zoom in here if you guys can't see that. Okay, 
Um, tech is down 3%, oil is down to $45 a barrel, which is crazy. I thought $50 a barrel was low, it just seems to keep dropping. Um, now may be a good time to get into an oil ETF if you think that it's gonna go back up here. Uh, the 10-year treasury yield fell almost three basis points to 2.78. Um, as that becomes more attractive to investors, um, you know, people are going to start getting out of equities. That's just a fact, you guys. People are looking for safe money. They're looking for safe havens, less risk, you know, higher yields, and they're going to start getting out of stocks. Um, and that's inevitable. That's what happened in uh, 2008. So this came out, I believe, this morning. Uh, Trump actually discussed axing uh, Jerome Powell, a.k.a. Jay Powell, the Fed chairman. Um, so just a quick blurb here, um, it says that Trump was frustrated with diving stock prices and the Fed's rate hike this week. He talked about firing central bank boss Jay Powell. So Powell has clearly made some rookie mistakes, it says here. Uh, his October remark that interest rates were a long way from neutral could arguably be credited with setting off the bear market, which it pretty much did. Um, Wednesday's hawkishness was, was so ill-advised that Fed... Um, that the Fed 48 hours had to send out two of its members to walk it back. So what do you think is going to happen in 2019, you guys? We're almost at the new year here. I'm interested to hear what you're thinking. Um, I've said it a few times now. I think that, honestly, you know, 2019 is going to be flat at best, in my opinion. Um, so ultimately, I'm going to be playing, you know, probably ETFs, you know, getting into, you know, more healthcare, more, um, you know, utilities, more you know finance with the raising interest rates um, increasing interest interest rates excuse me uh, i just think that's the way to play it you guys i may hold off i know i have my private membership group i have not been making you know a million trades a day i'm not a swing trader or a um, day trader by any means um, slow and steady is my philosophy so if you haven't checked out the informed investor do so below um, that is my excuse me private stock market membership group where I share my own uh, private portfolio, every trade I make, and we also have a ton of good equity research reports. Um, we released an equity research report about Apple, and you can see that it's actually tanking. I believe it's almost down 10% for the week uh, since we actually released that report about a week ago. Um, so I may even make separate videos on that, you guys, just to kind of promote the group, uh, show you guys, hey, these equity research reports are definitely valuable. You know, the price of admission for those alone is worth it. Um, let's see. Kurt Nasty, why are you waiting to jump on oil stocks? Um, I'm not waiting. It's just something that I haven't necessarily invested in in the past, and I don't know that uh, market that well. Um, there's a lot of political factors. There's a lot of propaganda. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, is going on behind the scenes and a lot of deals that are being cut behind the scenes. Also, obviously, legislation that, you know, can alter those oil prices pretty easily. Embargoes, sanctions, uh, things like that. So ultimately, you guys, um, you know, just take a look at oil. If you want to play in that realm, go ahead. Um, I know stocks are a little bit more regulated. Obviously, oil is regulated, but all it takes is a side deal with Saudi Arabia and Russia um, and Iran, you know, to mess with oil prices. So it's uh, very volatile, and a lot of that is out of our hands. Uh, Ying says, Warren Buffett lost a lot of money on Apple. I don't think he's panicking, though. No, I think it's a good company in the long term, but ultimately, you know, Apple's getting their butt kicked, man. I mean, people don't have, you know, $1,000 every year to spend on a new phone. I know I don't. Um, I don't make, <laughs> I pretty much don't make anything from YouTube. Um, and I work a regular job. I'm trying to buy a house. You know, I'm not, you know, trying to spend a thousand dollars every year on a phone. Just remember your wants and your need, needs, you guys. There's a big difference. What else we got here? So we got uh, the JD founder won't be charged. So JD.com, that's a popular Chinese stock that a lot of YouTubers talk about. Um, so I guess that some stuff happened uh, sexually in Minnesota. There's another sexual assault case. I swear, the worst thing you can be right now is, is a male and in power. If you're a male, you have any sort of notoriety or money, that's like the worst thing you can be right now. You can shake someone's hand in the grocery store and they'll accuse you of sexual assault. So there were profound evidentiary problems which would have made it highly unlikely that any criminal charge could be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Yeah, no duh. There's people running around saying he raped me, uh, she raped me, I got raped. They, we're, everyone's raping. It reminds me of that. I mean, rape is not a laughing matter, but it reminds me of that one video. If you guys remember, <laughs> there was a guy uh, whose sister almost got raped. He was on the news, and they're like, you know, in the hood, 
And he goes, he's like, they out here raping everybody, man. He goes, hide your kids, hide your wife. Everybody getting raped. Uh, so I just thought that was pretty funny. But um, just some classic YouTube banter. Uh, so let's see what we got here in the live stream and the chat. Um, Whitley says, I would disagree. I think legal or illegal. If you have been in the States for 10 years, no record, have a job and a family, you should be given the oppor opportunity, proper documents and not get deported. Um, okay. I mean, that's, that's your opinion. I just, it still doesn't make you any less illegal. <laughs> you know, you came here illegally. I can't start, you know, selling drugs and say, Hey, I've been selling drugs for 10 years. So now it's legal. Right. Um, Ying says, politics aside, I do, I know I am kind of heavy on the politics this episode. Sorry, you guys. So politics aside, are stocks overall undervalued, fair, or over? Um, well, it's it's funny. I feel my gut says that they're overvalued. However, uh, if you look at all the quarter three earnings reports, pretty much everyone was, you know, crushing their earnings reports, you guys. Everyone was like overperforming, coming in above expectations. I mean, everything was like, super super positive um, so that tells me you know maybe stocks aren't overvalued maybe this correction was just you know showing what the true value of stocks are and you know there's obviously efficient market hy uh, hypothesis or efficient market theory um, where stocks are always priced properly period at all times you know some people believe in inefficient markets um, i think right now um you know ultimately I say that stocks, I mean, my again, I know I'm rambling here, but my gut is telling me one thing, my brain is telling me another. Um, I think that if you dollar cost average and if you play for the long term, you know, stocks are always going to go up until, you know, something happens to where, you know, cryptocurrency takes over or money doesn't exist. You have to realize there's so many dollars tied up in people's 401ks, their retirement accounts, their Roth IRAs, their investment accounts um, that... You know, this isn't going anywhere anytime soon, in my opinion. So I hope that answers your question, Ying. Uh, Kurt Nasty says, how do you feel about tech stocks? I was first all in on marijuana, now shifting over to REITs and energy. Um, Abdul says, you only comment on U.S. stocks, only Canadian stocks too. Um, Ying says, I don't believe in efficient theory. What can drive SP down 20% in a week without any event just shows how rational the market is. Simon says, why are there people who blame computer trading and machine trading the reason for a bear market? Um, these are all good questions. So let's let's start with the first one here. How do I feel about tech stocks? So tech stocks, I think, um, exploded over the past couple of years, not only because it's been a nine-year uh, bull market, but also because... People buy stocks that they know, right? So if you're going to show show me, or when I say me, I say someone who's just your average investor, someone who knows about stocks, so let's say they're in their mid-20s. And if you're going to show them, uh, let's call it, you know, Apple stock, you know, Nike stock, and uh, some railroad company that they've never heard of, like what two stocks out of those three do you think they're going to pick to invest in? They're obviously going to pick Apple and Nike because that's what they know. You know, I'm not talking about sophisticated hedge fund managers. I'm not talking about anyone. I'm talking about like when people first get their Robin Hood account, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to invest in uh, Ford, Apple, Nike because, you know, I drive a Ford. I wear Nikes and my MacBook is, you know, what I'm doing this research on. So I think tech blew up. This, this is a long way of long winded way of saying I think tech blew up not only because you know the margins are huge and everything's going to the cloud and you know they're obviously doing well as businesses um, otherwise their stocks wouldn't be doing well uh, i just think that the average joe is also in on it and also with social media that's driving a lot of the value of these stocks uh, you can see it with bitcoin i know bitcoin is not a stock but it blew up. It was on LinkedIn article, Wall Street Journal article, social media. My aunt's cousin's brother is investing in Bitcoin. You know, when your aunt's cousin's brother is investing in Bitcoin, that's you know to get the hell out, <laughs> to be honest with you. So um, that's my answer. I think tech stocks were driven by um, a lot of social media, a lot of huge fat margins, uh, and also just, you know, the economy. The economy has been doing great. So Abdul says, I only comment on U.S. stocks only or Canada stocks as well. So Abdul, I only on this channel, I only talk about what I know. Um, if you want to go to a channel where people talk out of their ass, um, this is definitely not the channel. Um, I suggest you guys go elsewhere. This channel, 
I mean, I only trade U.S. equities for the most part, except for, you know, a couple of marijuana stocks here and there, um, you know, and those are based in Canada. Other than that, I, I don't have enough time uh, to sit here and research, you know, the best French stock or what the German uh, markets are doing. I just don't. You know, it's if there's a foreign based company that trades on American uh, stock exchanges, great. I'll invest in that company if I do my research and I think it's a good investment. Other than that, I'm not going to go look at, you know, to your to your point, probably Indian markets or, you know, French markets or the FTSE in London and all that. I mean, I just I it doesn't interest me, to be honest with you. So maybe that's ignorant or maybe I'm just laser focused on what I know. Take it for what you will. Um, Let's see here. Ying says, I don't believe in the efficient market theory. What can drive the S&P 500 down 20% in a week? Um, big money, big players, you know, people that really control the markets behind the scenes that we don't know about. Um, you would like to think that, you know, these industries are transparent. There's no deals going on in the, behind the scenes. Of course there is. There's too much at stake and there's too much power at stake. Uh, if you look at any of the president's cabinets, I mean, if you looked at Obama's cabinet, I mean, every single one of those people in his cabinet were coming from some sort of private company. Dick Cheney was the CEO of Halliburton. You had uh, Hank Paulson, CEO of Goldman Sachs. Um, these are all people that are coming from, you know, private, the private sector with obviously with buddies still in that sector that obviously are, you know, have their ear, if that makes sense. So who knows? I mean, I just think that there's a lot more at play. And people also trade the news, you know. Um, you know, tr a lot of news affects the markets. Um, so T Fox says, hey, Marco, hope you're having a great day. Thank you, my friend. Nice to see you, buddy. Uh, Simon says, why are there people who blame computer trading or machine trading for the reason for a bear market? Um, I don't think there's people that necessarily that blame uh, machine trading or computer trading um, like algorithms is what you're talking about. I don't think that's the cause of the bear market, but I think people um, feel like they can't stand a chance against a computer that's you know a million times you know faster and smarter than than them that doesn't need to eat you know sleep exercise you know whatever. So I think that that makes the markets more efficient in a way, um, but also you have to realize it's an algorithm. If you guys remember. Um, you may have known about an, a hedge fund. I forgot the exact name of the hedge fund, but they created an algorithm called the Black and Scholes model. It's essentially like a um, like a rocket science algorithm, like no joke. It's literally based off a rocket science algorithm, and they had like crazy returns for like two, three years. There's a there's a documentary about it. You guys need to watch it. Um, I forgot the name of the hedge fund. I forgot the name of the documentary, but the model is called the Black and Scholes model. Um, so ultimately, it's an algorithm that everyone thought they were beating the street. They finally figured out how to beat Wall Street and make consistent, ridiculous returns. And then the algorithm started crapping out every year after that. Um, so it's definitely a good watch. I definitely recommend you watch that because it has a lot to do with what you're asking. Um, Kurt Nasty says, thanks a lot. Amen. Um, Whitley, I'm not sure what you're saying that to, but I'm just kind of on my soapbox here today, you guys. So I apologize if I sound ranty or whatever. Um, Whitley Raymond says, I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. It's a long way down, but I think dollar cost averaging will definitely help. I agree as well. Um, I think, you know, dollar cost averaging and finding companies that you're interested in for the long term, that's definitely the way to go. Uh, Abdul says, thank you. Uh, my pleasure, Abdul. Uh, Kurt Nasty, have you done a video breaking down yields, margins, PE ratios, and dividends? If not, um, it would be okay for you in lamest terms. I'm not sure exactly what your question is asking, but your first part is, um, I believe I've done, you know, how to screen stocks, how to actually look for stocks. Um, I've done videos like that in the past, and um, you can find it in my channel. It's, it's under the um, investing or stock market investing playlist. Um, so check that out, you guys. So that's pretty much everything I have for today. I don't want to call it quits just yet. It's just that there wasn't a ton of news, you guys. It just seems that, you know, everything is pretty much negative across the board. I kind of wanted to take this time um, to just talk about what you guys are doing. What's your strategy? Um, I think that I'm going to hold on to cash. You know, cash is king for me at this point. Uh, I'm going to wait for these stocks to drop a little bit further, and I'm going to look into um, maybe some ETFs, something that's a little bit more less stressful or stuff that's, you know, less um, hands-on, high maintenance, if that makes sense, uh, rather than individual stocks for 2019. But we'll see. There's going to be a lot of good opportunities here coming up. Um, so again, you guys, if you haven't checked out the Informed Investor, that's my private group. 
Um, there's definitely a ton of value there just with the equity research reports alone. I believe the last ones we did, we covered Apple, uh, we covered um, Priceline, we covered a couple other uh, stocks that you normally wouldn't think about. Uh, I know Apple's a mainstream one, but there's a ton of other ones that you know I'm not going to mention here in this video. Uh, so if you're interested in that, check it out. If not, you guys, you know, have a great day. I thank you anyway for joining me. Um, I hope you all have a great Christmas. If you celebrate that, have a good holiday. Um, happy, happy holidays. Happy New Year if I don't see you guys. I should have a live stream next Saturday on the 29th. Um, so I'll wish you all a happy New Year in that one. Um, but again, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate the support in the chats, you guys. Uh, if you have any questions at the end here, let me just see if we got any coming in. Um, uh, we do have a couple here. Sorry, guys. I, I don't want to end this prematurely. I do want to answer these questions. Uh, Doug is saying, ouch, all that red hurts the eyes. Uh, what you buy now may continue to get cheaper. That's very true, Simon. Um, Whitley says, thanks for the info, bro. My pleasure. Doug, Merry Christmas. Simon, Merry Christmas. Flora, Merry Christmas. Uh, 302, Merry Christmas, my friend. Um, I'm actually going to be celebrating two Christmases. My wife uh, celebrates on the 25th. I celebrate on January 7th, so I'll see you guys for that Christmas too. Um, but whatever you guys celebrate, thank you so much, you guys. I really appreciate you sticking around and hanging out. I hope the fire, sorry, I'm looking, uh, pointing the right way. I hope the fire you know, creates a nice little ambiance with you guys on this nice winter day. So thank you so much, everybody. Have a prosperous day. Go for a run. Go to hit the gym. Go stretch. Go do some yoga. Go cook a nice meal. Um, I'm not going to advise, you know, any like tobacco use or anything like that. But if that floats your boat, why not? Um, just everything in moderation, you guys. Go enjoy yourselves. Thank you so much and have a prosperous day.